Do you know who this man is? Oh, you don't? Don't worry, you will know now. Melville Fuller was born on February 11th, 1833 in Augusta, Maine. He is the son of Frederick Augustus Fuller and Catherine Weston. His parents divorced shortly after his birth and he was raised by his grandfather, Nathan Weston. Both his maternal grandfather, Nathan Weston, and paternal grandfather, Henry Weld Fuller, were judges. His father was as well a well-known lawyer. Since Fuller's father remarried and did not provide any substantial financial assistance to his first wife and her two children, Fuller's mother gave piano lessons to earn money for her two children so he, she could be able to provide for them. Melville Fuller first attended college at Harvard University for one year. He then went to Baldwin College where he graduated while he was in the Phi Beta Kappa in 1853. He then spent six months at Harvard Law School but left without even graduating in 1855. Fuller was a minor figure in Illinois politics. He spent one term in the Illinois House of Representatives from 1863 to 1865 and was a delegate to the Illinois Constitutional Convention in 1862. He made the nominating speech for Thomas Hendricks for the Democratic nomination of president in 1876. On April 30, 1888, President Grover Cleveland nominated Melville Fuller for the chief justice position following the death of Morrison R. Waite Fuller, who was not the first man to be mentioned as a possible Supreme Court nominee. The former ambassador of Great Britain, Edward J. Phelps, was nominated, but he declined because he thought that as a former minister to England, his nomination might be looked down upon by Irish Americans. During the court case of U.S. v. E.C. Knight Company, Melville Fuller had construed the Sherman Antitrust Act of 1890, which was meant to prevent application to almost any businesses besides transportation, as well as the Pollock v. Farmers Loan and Trust Company case. He had declared the Federal Income Tax Law of 1894 unconstitutional. Sadly, Melville Fuller died at the age of 77 on July 4, 1910, due to a heart attack. His body is now laid to rest in New York City. In the Supreme Court case of District of Columbia v. Heller involved Dick Anthony Heller and the District of Columbia. This case was brought to the U.S. Supreme Court on June 26, 2008. When Heller, a D.C. police officer, wanted to carry a handgun at home as well, not just during duty, applied for a one-year license application, but somehow got denied. Heller sued the District of Columbia because he believed that this had violated his Second Amendment right to keep a working and functional firearm in his house without a license. After the hearing, the district court had granted that the government motion be dismissed. In 2007, the U.S. Court of Appeals from the District of Columbia Circuit determined that only one of the plaintiffs from Heller had a standing sue, which is in a law that requires a person who brought a unit to be a proper party to request a particular sue involved. This hit down on the first and third provisions and limited the enforcements of the Second Amendment. After this, the government filed for a cert, which was a writ that is issued by a superior court for the re-examination of an action of a lower court. With this, the Supreme Court had heard the arguments on March 18, 2008. In a 5 and 4 majority on June 26, the Supreme Court had declared the court ruling court because it was a violation of the Second Amendment which guaranteed that individual rights to possess firearms from the in-depths of service in the state and to use for traditional lawful purposes, including self-defense within the home. Although the district court dismissed the suit, the D.C., reversed it, which held the Second Amendment to protect the individual right to possess firearms. The court ruled that the District of Columbia give Heller a license to possess a handgun inside his house. The impact on society with this case has helped the court rule that the Second Amendment protects any individual's right to keep a gun in their house, along with the D.C. handgun ban, 
With these requirements, the firearm in the house be kept non-functional at all times.